Mr. Dan. Chris Fry is just joining us. Looks like we're recording. Hello, Chris. Hi there. Hi. Okay, I might as well say who we are and what we're doing here because it's the start of the recording. So I'm Vance Stevens. I'm in Malaysia. And Dan Bassel has joined him. I last saw him in Chicago a couple of years ago. And uh, Nina is here from uh, Maryland. Yes, if I get, that's right. And Suze Nairap from Denmark. And Michael yes, from yeah. Australia, from Adelaide, is on his way. And also B. B is in Brazil. She's Barbara Du. And this is uh, the uh, 26th of April. And it's uh, Learning Together, episode 454. I just added one. Uh, and uh, let's see, it's uh, the fifth Webhead's web connection, the regular revival meeting called the Webhead's Revival. And um, this is the, uh, I think, the 11th Talon group. Talon is teaching and learning online. So having said all that, let's see. I don't know, Michael, what, what would you like to do tonight? I was wondering whether you were going to lead this revival meeting with a prayer. Yes. Shall we take some time out to privately uh, do this? Okay. This is what they do in Thailand. <laughs> and here they do it like this. Okay. So I don't know about you guys, but I did. I got that out of the way. So how is everyone? Oh, yeah. Feeling good. I mean, it's a about the numbers we've had four days in a row with no new cases in south australia so we're all wow. feeling very ourselves. you know you guys are doing really well you know the curve for most places is going up like that or you know but in malaysia it's coming down just like this but in australia it's going whoa so we really nice looking in australia um i'm yeah, you know fun. world health unfortunately we have I done well the same thing in Brazil. <laughs> Brazil, Brazil. Yeah. But at least in the countryside where you are, B, I hope it's... Oh, we only have birds, so I hope birds do not transmit anything. Birds and dogs. <laughs> I, I read this week that two American cats have been diagnosed with COVID-19. Really? Hmm. Oh, look, James here. Yeah, hi. How lovely. <laughs> what? Oh my goodness, I can't find me. <laughs> just, just sit here. Let me open it up. Let me just introduce a couple more people. Chris Fry is here okay. from Barcelona. Yeah. Daph is here from Denia in Spain. Jane Great. From possibly Hello. Canada. I don't know. Where are you now, Jane? Well, right now I'm in Florida. Ah. Um, yeah. And uh, Mike's up in Nova Scotia. So I decided to isolate down here where um, we can get outside a little bit more easily. I'm sure Florida is quite safe. The governor is doing everything that's necessary. Well, who would have thought that Florida yeah. seems to be safer than uh, Nova Scotia? <laughs> and here's Heike from Germany. Hello. Hi. I think I've mentioned everybody. Uh, some, some, Hi, I Michael. Some, before some of you arrived, but anyway, you're all on the recording. And Teresa okay. is on her way. To raise it from Portugal. Mm -hmm. So we're having a nice turnout here for the Webhead's weekly revival meeting mm -hmm. on a Sunday. How appropriate Hello is that? There. Just in case you needed reviving. Yeah. It's hey, Michael. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, Daph. Oh, sorry. Hi, everyone. Hello, Hello Teresa. Hi, Teresa. Teresinha. Teresinha, how are you, Daphne? And, he, <laughs> and Jane, I haven't seen in a long time. Yeah, wow. it's a long time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I remember, remember those times in Seattle in 2000. Oh, yes. <laughs> and New York. Those were two fabulous conferences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Jane's been down here recently. She has a son who's wisely chosen to fall in love with an Australian, so he's stuck here. 
So this Jane has to come and, and visit. Michael us. gave me <laughs> somehow. Mike and I managed to plan a wonderful trip to Australia between the fires and the virus. I don't know how we managed to squeeze that in. And well, Mike <laughs> gave us a wonderful tour of Adelaide. It was mm. great. I've been meaning to ask you what you thought of that, actually, because the first half of it was a bit of an experiment, if you remember. I took Jane and her husband on a tour of important places in my life. Not a normal tour of Adelaide, a tour of oh, my... I think that would have been much more interesting than any other kind of oh, tour. Very, it was brilliant. It was really brilliant. It, it was so Rita. nice. We got to see where he was born. Rita, Rita. <laughs> Sorry, Jane. Hello, hello. hello. <laughs> Where I went to school. That's right. Here's Hala from Sudan, but okay. now from Bahrain. Oh. Bahrain right now. Originally Sudanese, huh? <laughs> Hello, nice. everybody. Hello. How are you? Hello. Fine, Hello. Fine. Hello. you? So good to oh, see you. Oh, long time. No, say hi, Rita. I Hello, V. Okay, we, if we count Hala as Bobby. Hello, Bobby. Dan, we have six Bobby. times in Hello, Bobby. Jesus. Hello. Why don't you join in us? Hi, everybody. Stick around. Hi, Bobby. Rita from Australia just joined. Uh, from Argentina, sorry. <laughs> Austria, Argentina, Australia. No, seriously, from Argentina. From <laughs> Rosaria, Argentina. She's just now joined us. Yeah, nice to see you guys. I'm listening in the background. Hello, Bobby. Hello, Bobby. She's not going to be able to listen for very long. I'm going to put in the headphones. <clears throat> oh, yeah. She says that I have to tell you about our new grandchild. Well, he's not here yet. He's kind of on the way. Still in utero? Hmm? Still in utero? Uh, yes. Uh, he's... Her, his mother is in the hospital in, in Doha, and things look like they're going just fine. So Great. No well, pre-congratulations. <laughs> uh -huh. That's what's on Bobby's mind at the moment. I'm sure it is. Yeah. It's hard to be so far away at times like this. Yeah. And we can't get there. And, and her mother tried to fly from uh, Kuala Lumpur to Doha right at the time. It must have been March 16th or 17th. March 16th, I suppose. The no, 17th, maybe the 17th, because that, the, the movement control order went into effect on the 18th. And even though on the 17th, Doha decided they weren't admitting anyone into the country at that date. So whereas... Uh, uh, Michelle's mother tried to get into, uh, tried to fly there. Uh, the day before the Malaysian order kicked in, she was thwarted by the uh, by the uh, Doha authorities, who wouldn't let, who wouldn't allow people on planes coming to Doha, except there was an exemption for uh, medical personnel, and it turns out that some people whom Clara, uh, Michelle's mother, met in the airport when she was being denied entry and they were let in, turned out to be nurses who are actually treating Michelle right now in Doha. Well, how's that for a story? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So they're so all, yeah. You, your daughter-in-law's parents live in KL? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're Malaysian. Malaysian. Yeah. yeah. I had forgotten that part. Mm -hmm. I heard I heard of a story of someone who uh, had uh, left the UK uh, with his Australian girlfriend, um, and during the flight, to, and in in the UK, they decided to um, get rid of the the apartment to definitely move out. They shipped some stuff ahead already to Australia because they wanted to live together in Australia. And wanted to stay in Australia and literally as they were flying down 10 hours too late Australia did the lockdown and uh, so he was denied entry she was Australian he was denied mm -hmm. entry he had to return first to the UK and now he had to return to America because of being American 
and uh, so they're split wow. apart uh, so mm -hmm. tragic and literally 10 hours too late they landed mm -hmm. yeah well, my uh, daughter-in-law uh, she came she went to australia in february to see her uh, sister who is living in sydney and um, we all warned her to uh, come back earlier than predicted but she had her holidays and she wanted to stay on so uh, she returned to Brazil on the 28th of uh, March and uh, what she didn't see is when when she uh, flew from uh, Sydney to Santiago uh, that she did not have a connecting flight to Brazil mm. so she stayed she did all this uh, trip about hours it takes uh, from the moment you leave home she arrived in Santiago she was stranded in Santiago she had to wait 10 hours in a cubicle standing no sound lost to be yeah uh, then she started feeling unwell mm. Now, where is no she now? From the... But she was diagnosed with uh, COVID, so uh, fortunately it was not very strong. She had headaches and uh, she was coughing a bit. She had fever, but it was not high fever. And she recovered. She went now to hospital last week to see, um, uh, to do the exams again. And uh, she is now negative. So everything uh, went well so Good. And, uh, yeah i have a happy story i have two friends um they've been married a long time they met in russia um, where they were both teaching english uh, she's belgian and he's american and they are now retired and we're moving to belgium some of you i think i've told the part of the story so anyway they they sold their house here and then COVID-19 happened, so they couldn't take the cruise they were going to take to, to get to Belgium. And they were kind of stuck without a house. But fortunately, they had a friend who has a townhouse that he let them live in because he wasn't living in it. And we got together with them on Zoom, and then we actually got together and took a walk in, in the park near us. It was really lovely. And I expected to be able to do that a few more times because I didn't think that they would be able to get a flight. But yesterday, they arrived in Antwerp after a very long and circuitous trip. And they are now quarantined in a, an Airbnb in two weeks. They will be OK. So they made it and hopefully healthily. So sometimes things work out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, hi. Uh, sorry, I was a bit late. Um, I, I listened to the recording last week, and I heard you saying, Michael and B. I think, you know, why do they not allow people to use the beaches? And it was like that here with the mountains. You know, they said you can't go walking in the mountains. It seemed very strange at first, but then it turned out that it was because of the emergency response that they didn't want people walking in the mountains because all of the helicopters and anything which goes to get people who are have problems were needed. So, well, you know, when you got the reason, it became. I don't think the beach is as dangerous as the mountains, but anyway, I thought it was a. You know, we didn't think of that at first. It was just why not you know? right i understand that in spain you're limited like if you have to walk a dog you're limited to a certain number of meters from your door that you can take your dog you know about this staff but well but the, the the rules here have been changing from morning to evening every day because of the uh very good uh, government that we have they don't know what to do they decided that today the kids were going to go out and that they would have to accompany their parents to the drugstore or to the supermarket 
or to the cigarette uh, kiosk. And everybody complained, you know, it was in the morning. By noon, everybody was complaining because those are the places where most people are and, uh, you know, more the contagion will be more, uh, you know. And uh, so by night, they decided that no, that they decided that today, kids from uh, up to 14 years could go out, uh, one, pa one parent with two kids maximum, and with masks, and they cannot go uh, uh, more than one kilometer away from, from their house. And, uh, and they say that if everything is uh, going okay, next week uh, adults can go out for exercising like uh, one hour a day or something like that. But uh, today I've been looking out of the window and I see uh, couples with three or four kids, no mask, walking around and people with no kids. And, uh, and we still, uh, are we still having 300 a death a day? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and lots of contagious every day. So I think this is uh, not really good. Like my grandkids, they have a good uh, backyard, so they won't go out today. They won't go out until things are better. Uh, Spain yeah. was much, much uh, heavier, it was much more... Um, I can't find my word, lockdown. It was much more um, absolute lockdown because, yeah. uh, as you say, people... No sound from you. Elizabeth. No sound, yeah. Um, Elizabeth, it froze. Yeah. So I'll jump in and say another thing my Spanish friend said is that you can't, when you can go to the supermarket once every two weeks. Maybe this is just Madrid, I don't know. Mm. Uh, but you can't go to any supermarket. You have to go to one that you've been assigned to in your neighborhood and you have mm. to walk. There. Well, you yeah. have to go to the, to the, the one that is. Uh, uh, closer to your house but mm -hmm. uh, you can go they you know they don't know if you're going every day or if you're going once a week mm -hmm. but uh, it's common sense that the less you go the safer you are mm -hmm. you know, like, yeah in like, my my uh, my my brother is living in panama and there it has been a total lockdown it's almost military there you have police patrolling the streets mm -hmm. uh, people are inside their apartments houses whatever they go they can only leave two hours a day to to do their uh, shopping and this is according to the hours are established according to their identity numbers so uh, what happens is that my brother for instance he can only go out from half past 12 to uh, to half past two whatever and then obviously there is prohibition no alcohol you cannot buy it you cannot transport it you cannot drink Not it here. <laughs> okay and uh, you have a very big high <laughs> yeah uh, um, a very important fine if you are found so doing I, these things i have so to jump really, in uh, there with my state maryland and i i congratulate my Republican governor, I don't like him, but he, I think he's done a good job. But one thing that they did was when they established which businesses were essential and could mm -hmm. stay open, one of them was liquor stores. Go figure. So I questioned that and somebody said, well, it's because if people are alcoholic and they can't get at liquor, they will go into the, the what are they called? DTs, delirium tremens, and they will need to go to the emergency room and we don't want them in the emergency room. I, I don't know if that was the reasoning. Uh, it, might, it might have something to do with the fact that the state owns all the liquor stores. I don't know, but I... I to wipe down their <laughs> well, you, can, I mean, you can buy anything other supermarket. Yes. It's yes. like like Donald yes, Trump exactly. who thinks we exactly <laughs> that was the joke of the year. <laughs> oh my. 
Yeah, but he must be on the effect of the chlorokine. The same thing happens to <laughs> our president. <laughs> it models the brain. <laughs> what what a, a team they are. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. I suggest you take uh, an injection of, of a round off. Yes. <laughs> that would be the first person that would eliminate. That would be nice if he tried it out on himself yes. before he recommended exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> Anyway, we're laughing, but we are in a major turmoil in our country because yes. on Friday now, uh, our, uh, not mine, uh, not even our president, but the, the person who is there or the monster that is there, uh, his minister of justice renounced and he was very popular. And he also, when he renounced, he renounced making all sorts of accusations of illegalities and corruption. So um, five, year, five uh, hours later, uh, the president came to talk in a live uh, speech. And then it was the most surreal thing I have ever heard. You had a number of disconnected, total nonsense sentences like a stream of consciousness that was coming out and he was babbling there and talking about every single moment, I think, of his government, but very personal things. And uh, we were just looking <laughs> and listening to this and then we said, no, this is, he's totally insane. There is no, absolutely no doubt about it. I know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Teresa, Teresa uh, for, yes. Portugal. Portugal has been the country that has uh, dealt with this problem in the best way, I exactly. think. Exactly. Seems like it, yes, exactly. I mean, we, we, we closed the borders with Spain uh, way back, I think at a great moment, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. only, they're only open for, you know, trucks going through with uh, goods and so on, uh, and medical equipment. Uh, I'm sure. And, um, you know, we've been, according to the government and our president, who is very well liked in this country, mm -hmm. um, we are behaving, in quotes, very well as a people, uh, although there's a certain disobedience, of course, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, we've been doing quite well. Yeah. Uh, but I was just going to say, going back to Trump, I don't know if you saw this, um, I got this uh, cartoon, kind of cartoon, uh, or not really, it's just a picture of Boris Johnson talking to the Queen on uh, their um, <laughs> first phone meeting, right? And uh, he, sa he said, uh, I got COVID-19, and she said, go touch Trump. <laughs> <laughs> But he's immune because he's on chlorokine, so he is immune, just like our president. He goes on, he spreads the virus around, and then he gets nothing, but his brain is degenerating, so uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, anyway. All kinds of jokes, and we need them. We need to yep. get the good laugh. Exactly. Yeah. Almost every day or every day, and Do, uh, do you, and guys, do you guys, guys follow Randy Rainbow on YouTube? No. Mm -hmm. He's, he's, he's a genius. Uh, yeah. um, look, look him up. His, his real name is Randy Rainbow. Uh -huh. And uh, he has a YouTube channel and he does parodies of song. Uh -huh. They go all the way back to 2016, mm -hmm. Bank, or at least 2017. They're so clever. It, Broadway shows and uh, mostly Broadway shows. Um, uh, probably some of you, some of you saw the the parody of the lion sleeps tonight. Yeah. I think it was going <laughs> to be viral. Well, he he does things like that only a little more racy, <laughs> but they're very very funny. He's he's amazing. Um, I would suggest that you start out with uh, Andy which is okay. a song that's parodying a song called Sandy from uh, Greece, I think, the musical Greece. Uh -huh. I, I never saw that musical, so I didn't know this song, but it's very funny. If it's about how he's 
he's in love with with the governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo. Mm -hmm. He's just great. I, he gives me the laugh I need when I need it. Uh -huh. I don't okay. know if he'll be offended because some of the things he says are a bit offensive, but they're very funny. I saw one today from an Australian cartoonist called Michael Lunig. And it's, it's funny and sad. It's a mother walking along the street with her baby in the pusher. They're going to the park and they get to the park and the gate's closed. And on the sign on the gate, it says, due to COVID-19, I'm sorry, this park is closed. We have gone online at www.park.com. <laughs> <laughs> right, like the, the one with the cartoon with the passengers on the plane and then getting the uh, announcement from the captain saying, I'm working from home today. <laughs> and everybody goes, ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, But you know what I find, what I find fantastic, I was just reading this um, piece of news today about, I think it was the Met opera getting together yesterday for a three or four hour uh, show everybody from home and they're you know playing and singing these fabulous pieces uh, a bit like that uh, eight hour live show on youtube uh, forget the name now but you know i kept thinking to myself who would have thought this would be possible several months ago you know, having these shows, spectacular shows online with such good sound and so on. It's really amazing, you know, how, how people can be creative and adapt to the situations we're all living in because this is a world uh, thing, you know. So I find that amazing. Yes, Sus? One thing that's uh, making me get up every morning is that... Uh, we have a, a leader of a children's choir who is very popular. He started uh, very early making a, a morning song session from his home. He plays the piano, he uh, introduced the song and you can see the text. And the wonderful thing is he starts with some, uh, some gym exercises. You have to, mm -hmm. to stretch and to do strange faces and uh, train your voice. But these two morning songs, every day for, for now for uh, six weeks has made my voice much better. I usually I don't like to listen to my own voice, but now I really don't care. Uh, <laughs> and the wonderful thing is about, about I, I would I say more than a million, that's <laughs> one fourth of the, the population are following this program every day. We're singing together and now they also have uh, started a program on, on Friday night for an hour where popular musicians will sing one song each and there were, were some comments and it is followed by small videos from, from people um, asking for a favorite song and very often uh, there, there are small children videotaped uh, asking for a song which is very touching and very, very sweet. Um, it is really bringing something togetherness, singing together. It's, it's very, very nice. Mm. We have this tradition in Denmark. In, a, in an innovative way, doing it uh -huh. together right. apart. It's, it's very good. Right. And, and mm. I, I've been um, watching the, the plays that are put on YouTube for free by the National Theatre of London. Yes. This week I saw Twelfth Night, mm. Um, mm. wonderful production. Last week it was uh, an adaptation of Jane Eyre. Mm. Uh, they're wonderful. Of course, they're, they're trying to, to raise money and I haven't sent them anything, uh, but I hope to. <laughs> So those are just on YouTube at National Theatre. Their, their, um, their channel, and there's a different play every week. Yeah, Abbey Theatre from Dublin is doing something similar. 
and I was very skeptical, but it took about 10 minutes and then it didn't matter that I was sitting at home watching yeah. this one production. It was just as good as being in the theatre. Well, you know, in some ways it's better because when I see a Shakespeare play, I probably miss about half of it. And they had subtitles. Ooh. I didn't miss anything. <laughs> <laughs> right. I loved it. And what's interesting is, of course, that people are discovering that you can do all these things online. What's going to happen, as people are now calling it, on the other side? So right. many of these things are going to stay online and they won't well, go they, back. They can't afford Absolutely, to stay online. Michael. They, mm -hmm. You know, they may not be able to afford to get through to the other side, especially small, small yeah. outfits. I was... Uh, I was listening to some people talking on, on television the other day about uh, large companies reducing their, their uh, physical spaces and having the, the employees that can work from home working from their homes. So they, they would reduce the cost of electricity, water, and uh, all the things that, you know, the things that, that uh, it, it implies to have more people uh, working from, from the company. Yes. That, that's curious because just, sorry, Doris, go ahead. <laughs> it's okay. No, no. Uh, you know, that's, that's something that is happening now. I am working on my own and I am teaching online. So I got these partners in Germany now and that's great. They tell me, okay, here you have the students. I do all the work. I do everything. I had to pay my for my electricity, have a computer, uh, the time, the schedule, materials, everything. So just you know, they find someone to to teach. They need a teacher. Okay. So now, uh, but the the worker is the one that has to have everything now. So it's for me, it's great. I am so happy, you know, to have students, <laughs> but. Um, that's, that will be happening in, in many fields, not only in education. Yeah, yeah but uh, I was Besitos just... Everyone. Besitos, everyone. Besitos. Besitos. <laughs> the other day I was talking to João about that. And, uh, you know, I think that things will change uh, quite a bit because I think companies may have come to the conclusion that having certain employees working at home uh, can be useful. And uh, there will have to be... I guess, adjustments in terms of uh, salaries, et cetera. Uh, but I mean, you know, whatever adjustments. But for example, uh, my older son, Pedro, uh, who works at uh, the French bank, Elizabeth Ann, you know this one, Paribas, uh, BNP Paribas. And um, they had been thinking of sending them home like two, three times a week for quite some time. Then they had to do it all of a sudden. So I think that will probably accelerate that process of having workers, maybe not just two, three times a week, but the whole week at home, mm -hmm. maybe reporting to you know, the physical bank, uh, I don't know, once, twice a month, something like that. So I think several things will change and I hope that many will change for the better. Let's. Wouldn't it be nice if we find that we don't need so many cars so we can, um, I know in some places they've turned the highways over to pedestrians so that they mm -hmm. can walk and um, we can replace our cars with bicycles. Um, they're also finding that workers are the ones who have to tra uh, travel the farthest because they can't get into the cities because they can't afford to live there. So they're living several um, subdivisions or, or um, suburbs away from the city. So uh, more housing needs to be built in that's affordable so that they can get around and then when we don't need all the cars, we can turn the parking lots into housing units mm -hmm. <laughs> and have a place so that um, um, people on a lower income can walk to work and, and everybody can walk to work. So uh -huh. <laughs> I think we should do some dreaming of uh, urban planning and how we can redesign our cities to uh -huh. be more... Uh, 
Oh, that's a great idea. I'm starting a, a course with my English for Architecture students. And uh, in this uh, quarter, one of the topics is uh, uh, this designing of, of cities, you yeah. know? So maybe that would be a topic to discuss. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. Very interesting topic. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. Of course, <laughs> yeah, there are all the people. This, this, this week was uh, Earth Day, so that uh -huh. was a topic we discussed in class. And, and uh, Elena Galani, she's a teacher from Greece, and, and she joined uh, my students, and they're working on a project, and we play games. And, and so it's like, okay, uh, there, there's going to be, there's, I mean, there is a big, problem with economy and maybe uh, a lot of uh, are going to close. A, a lot of people I mean a lot of businesses are going to go down uh, but uh, on the other hand uh, employees can stay home and it's going to be better for them so they don't pay so much uh, on other things so I think at the end of the day we will find a way and there will be balance and, and we will survive that's what we do <laughs> yes yeah, I think that it's going to be difficult. There are many big stores. Obviously, we don't need them, okay? It's just consumer ideas, but big retail stores, in the, especially in the retail market, luxury retail market, they're closing their doors. And this is quite dramatic, not so much for the, <laughs> the shops, but the it's workers, for the people yeah. who work there. Exactly. I, mm -hmm. I have here a... Um, an, ar an article that came out uh, and it shows the Lords and Taylors, Newman Marcus, uh, who else? Uh, Gap is closing. They are all filing bankruptcy and it's, it's quite dramatic when mm -hmm. you see the number of people who are being let off. Yeah. Big changes are like that, you know? Uh, we uh, in our country, our country is destroyed. Everybody knows that. And we are all over, so we had to have to to change everything. You know, it's being a, a so what we are the whole world is living now for us is like okay, um, we have been living that uh, for quite a, a time now, and we have found a way. You know, and it's community, people helping each other, and finding new ways to produce and and survive. So. Mm -hmm. We were talking mm -hmm. about sustainability uh, yesterday, and and we were talking about. Um, sustainable food practices mm -hmm. so maybe well now you won't work in a in a retail mm -hmm. industry you will go to you will find something else okay mm -hmm. uh, that, I mean big changes like this are mm -hmm. killing what we know oh okay so every day is a new day so interesting Doris <laughs> is that uh uh, virtual worlds are having a great influx of people. Have you noticed any changes there? Yes, I came back yesterday. Oh, I was in second life time. last night. I'm, you know, mm -hmm. I, have, oh, I had trouble. Yes, as a matter of fact, I have a nice picture that I'm going to post because uh, Pionia, Destiny, that's my avatar there, she was wearing a mask all the time, you know, so <laughs> I went to this beautiful place that is, is, is it has, there is art and there's a lot of, you know, uh, scenery and music is near the, the sea, so you see the, the sunset and all that, and it was really, really relaxing for me, I, I had a terrible week this week, um, and I found this, uh, King sitting on a high chair, high chairs. So Pionia sat, sat next to him, looking at him like, "Uh huh, what are you going to do now, King?" You know, I got this uh, <laughs> uh, seeing my mouse to protect my life, and 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 he's sitting there with a, a sword, like, "Okay, what are we going to do?" You know, and uh, so it's the fact, the fact uh, is though that um, in Second Life, some of the uh, old timers are uh, are returning, yeah, like yourself. <laughs> Um, also quite prominent people, and one of them is Pathfinder Lester. You probably know him. Right? Yes, of course. He was the educational, uh, the person in charge for educational services at Glinda Lab, and he's not been in Second Life. He's now, um, he's been, uh, he's talking a lot to Linda Lab again. 
they've set up a big new company because they say, um, look, there's something that soon will kick in, which is the Zoom fatigue. Mm. <laughs> Zoom fatigue, yeah. And uh, he says it has, it's Zoom fatigue. There's actually a National Ge Geographic, a big article about it, if I want, if I can share that one. And uh, they're saying that the, what is missing about Zoom, which I mean, we are we're blessed mm -hmm. with Zoom. I really, I think mankind is blessed with Zoom, and I'm a big advocate of Zoom, and I use it all day long, and I really love it. And I don't think we would have survived this crisis uh, without it, honestly. Um, and so, and so many of our students can join Zoom and everything. So, um, but there is something that is, it says that it drains a lot the mental capacity to be in a Zoom meeting. For example, um, looking at uh, 10, 12 um, um, faces that keep moving, yeah, that is very draining on our eyes, on our mental state, and it's, uh, and it's the sense of space that is missing. Uh, sometimes also gestures and, and body language that talk a lot. Um, so there is a an idea thinking that yes, in a virtual world, there could also collaboration be taking place. Um, people can be trained. Uh, English language learning can take place, and it's a lot less uh, energy draining than Zoom meetings um, because you can spend many hours in Second Life just feel good. Yeah, do you, yeah. Do you agree mm -hmm. with that? Yeah, mm -hmm. I went. And I went to sleep at two o'clock yesterday. You know? yeah, and even feel better afterwards yeah so it's um, mm. it's, it's a relaxing beautiful environment and so for the eyes as well just Hi, <laughs> Heike, what's, what's, <coughs> Heike, what's the name of the the man the, the guy can you write it in the chat it's Pathfinder Lester that's fine remember mm -hmm. yeah. so after Heike said that I switched Thanks. to speaker view which it, it's it's easier to ignore the other people and you're just looking at one person at a time so i think maybe that will be easier right now i'm looking at Teddy. yes from uh, from teaching online uh, that's I, I teach only one student so for me is is like when somebody is talking i just look at the person that is talking you know because i only have one student and so these are practices that we're learning and that we had to pass, you know, so this, nobody is, was ready for this, even though we have been doing this for so many years, you know, uh, there are new things all the time, or, or the things that we thought that they were like that, now they are a little bit different. You got many points of view because um, you got the student there to inform you, you know, what are you saying, what are you saying, what are you seeing on your screen and all that. So it's learning is for me. What I am experiencing is that now I have a back pain that I didn't have before. <laughs> and my arms, because I, I lean on, on yeah. my table, you know, so, and, and that was pretty, that's getting pretty bad. So. Last night, and after I went to Second Life, uh, I was listening to the sound of the sea, and it was so beautiful. And and, and then after I finished uh, taking photos and all that, I stayed until two o'clock in the morning, and I went to bed. And I started. I looked for uh, sound of the sea in in YouTube. And I just put on my headphones. I mean, and went to sleep happily you know, <laughs> because of, of the sound of the sea and I got it from Seco Life you know before I couldn't sleep so <laughs> last night I was happy yeah that's what happened <laughs> I was I was back I had problems with the internet so sometimes when I go it's, it's lottery you know and mm -hmm. probably last night it was an empty place so that's why I could walk and take, take pictures and stay that's a big problem with uh, virtual worlds uh, when you have I couldn't go to, to the, I couldn't attend the, the virtual world best practices this year because I mean, the minute I landed on the, I would crash. And I couldn't go to um, uh, the opening of the museum, the, uh, the gallery in Edonation because I couldn't stay five seconds there. So 
that's the uh, the problem with uh, virtual worlds. So, but it's, with the small groups, it's it's okay. So no big no big crowds in in virtual worlds, but it's wonderful. Last night I found this a question on the sand and with papers all around, and it says, "So what are you going to do with your life now?" You know, it's like. I wish I had my students there with me so we could uh, walk uh, and, and, and be in, immersed in the activity, you know, and, and, and it's so what happening right now that is eye opening. So, well, <laughs> I hope I can convince them to come soon. <laughs> Mm, Nair, you're there. <laughs> yes, well, I'm here, but uh, I'm, my, the uh, Zoom cannot find my camera. Ah. I'm, using, I'm using the laptop. I wanted to test it, but I need to solve that problem. Hmm. Good, good morning, good day, happy good morning. day. Sleep. <laughs> An application, a sleeper. Sleep, Tell me about yeah. it. Oh, let me find the information in the web and I, and I sign, I said it in the chat. But it is very nice because you, uh, we use it in the tablet and we play it at night when we are going to sleep and you can choose any kind of uh, sound, nature sound, rain and water, nature and forest, and you can uh, uh, choose the, the level of sound or the amount of each sound like uh, for nature and forest there there is water there is uh, trees there is birds wind frogs crickets and each one has a volume mm. and you, and you can choose uh, the the volume for each one what, what i tried one that? that is called calm Mm -hmm. uh, but I found it that I, I couldn't stand it because it was only the, the sound of the sea. Last, uh, last night with, with YouTube, uh, the, you get the sound of the sea, but there was also music. So it was a very soft music and in the background you would listen to the... So that's uh, that I could uh, enjoy really much. It was like you are sitting at the shore, of the you know, and you are like... Listening to music, but at the same time you are listening. You're looking at the sea and, and listening. Oh to well, it. that's different. That's that different was a, a nice experience. The, there is also um, also rain and water, a city and household. Let me see if, I can if you find like relax and meditation, I'm, I'm going to search for it in the web. See if they have it. Mm -hmm. There's a I'm from the uh, Chicago area, uh, and I've been following the webheads for uh, 15 or more years. Uh, it's really great to hear all of you uh, uh, and, and share what you're talking about. Uh, we started a little bit of a conversation in the chat group about universal basic income uh, with uh, uh, economies crashing and people out of work and uh, uh, you know we don't know what's going to happen uh, after this is as far as companies downsizing and so forth. Uh, in the United States, uh, one of the candidates for president was talking about it, but it really didn't get a lot of attention. But the question was, uh, uh, in, your, in your countries, uh, have any of them, uh, Spain or Italy, uh, uh, begun to consider uh, a universal basic income of some form or the other? I can. I don't think so. Not, not uh, in Portugal, for many years. as far as... Uh, but never got anywhere. <laughs> We've been debating it, yes, in Germany. I think it's been trialled in Finland. I'm not sure what the state of that trial is, but there has been a trial in Finland. Where else? Everything starts in Finland. I think I think uh, in 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 the Arab region they do have that. Uh, 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 in Bahrain they do they do give. Uh, the basic income for um, anyone who is not employed. Um, the, uh, uh, they call it, I think, uh, something to do, uh, a term, something to do with 
we will not give you this uh, basic uh, income uh, until you get a job. So there is a minimum living wage where where they give them this, but when they are employed, they it will stop. So it's not mm -hmm. whether they are employed or otherwise. Um, I'm not sure what, if the, if this is what you uh, yeah are, uh, what you're asking about. It's it's a guaranteed income uh, after you uh, graduate. Um, it, I mean, it gives you financial security until you uh, find a job. In Argentina, we have something like that, you know, Doris. Yet uh, the poor people, many poor people, I cannot generalize, but many poor people um, make the most of it in a bad way that is, in fact, they don't look too hard to, you know, for a job because they are really satisfied with the money they get from the government. So. Uh, they don't want to work now. Yeah, and that's they need uh, money because that that is not enough. That no, no, no. Really it is enough for many of them because they get uh, some something because of different reasons. But they sum up what each of the members of the families get. One, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, so different plants. They get a lot of money. Uh, yeah, in yeah fact, but that is. That is just yes, that's a, like what happened for, in Venezuela. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, I know. It's exactly. The same. I know, but what they do with that, what what the the government or the 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 ones in power want to do with that money is to have the people poor enough so they can they they can reelect them all the time. Of course, they are being given money for doing nothing. Of yes. course. So that yes. that is just to 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 come by, just to live for a for for a. The minimum uh, salary is not enough to buy half a pound or, or a pound of of cheese. We it's know. not enough. It's not enough. It, so people, it is really sad. What is yes, happening with, with this? Uh, I mean, in Venezuela and now in Argentina, I, I have the two of you, I, I, I am here. And what this saddens me is that, for example, now with, uh, with this crisis, Maduro is stronger and Mr. Fernandez is stronger. So the presidents or, or, or the governments are using the crisis to keep on controlling people, you know, and to keep them uh, where they can be. Right now in Venezuela, they say, okay, stay home. And if you, if you get sick, you're going to go to jail. <laughs> They're going to disappear, you, your family. Um, it is terrible. I mean, uh, so um, right now here, for example, uh, there are many Venezuelans living here, a refugee for these people, I, I'm, I'm the representant of Venezuelans in, in Jujuy. So they call me all the time. Yesterday I got a call from um, the Chilean consul uh, asking for a, a Chilean, a, a man married to a Venezuelan, but the Venezuelan is, is a foreigner, so she can, they were in quarantine, quarantine and now they had to be taken to their countries. That's what the, the, the the governor is doing here, so, uh, but she's Venezuelan. She cannot be taken back because we don't even have an embassy anymore. <laughs> so she's like in the middle of a, okay, what are we going to do? So uh, since God, yeah. there are uh, organizations like uh, the Red Cross that is helping, but this is only for a short time. But talking uh, about salaries, that was the original question. Uh, in Venezuela, for instance, teachers, with a with a postgraduate study or a doctorate, they are teaching online if they have a, a good computer and they have a good connection, and they get paid five dollars for the class, maybe an hour cl a class, an hour long class. That's five dollars for for them. That's okay. That's enough if they have if they get enough classes. But that is not the, the stand. That shouldn't be the standard for a teacher with a PhD. Well, let me tell you, 
<laughs> I'm teaching this class because uh, the university asked me to continue, I told you the other day, uh -huh. because they have no teachers. And since I was the one that designed that uh, English for Architecture program, they asked me if I wanted to do it. And I'm doing it. And uh, the, the, the money I get is, you know, for me, it, I, I cannot get the money from Venezuela to here. But anyway, if I were in Venezuela, with what they uh, pay me, I could only get one kilo of uh, ribs. Wow. That's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For the for the for the for the whole course, that hmm. it's a three month course. Yeah. So I could only get that if I were in Venezuela. And so and just I just you have can't to even get it. it that in my that bank account. You're essentially working for nothing. Yes, yeah. I, that's for the because I want to help uh, a university. You know. Yeah. Wow. That I do it, and because I like teaching. English for architecture. You you all know that I love yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I remember taking many of my ideas from your uh, blended course uh, and your uh, your materials. You know, I was teaching at uh, uh, different schools, uh, like you know, graphic design and lawyers, engineers. I have all the <laughs> all these kind of and. Um, your work was an inspiration. Well, you've always been my inspiration, you know. So, so oh. Venezuela, <laughs> uh, uh, yes, uh, you were the one that introduced uh, web heads to me. And Evelyn Izquierdo, that's the other, the other one that is someone that I, I really love and I use uh, that's been here and there. Well, here we are <laughs> uh, after some, so, so, so many years, you know. You are so special to, to, to us. I'm talking Thank about you. Evelyn. She's not here, maybe because she can't. She 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 doesn't have a, a good internet it, connection. Internet or... connection. Mm -hmm. Her laptop broke. That's the last, the latest. Yes, yes. Her laptop work. Uh, her work laptop broke. I see. Is having problems with connection as well. And she has so much to give uh, because she's a warrior, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, well. <laughs> But what we are here and we're fighting and hoping that uh, you know, you know, these people that believe that they can control the world sooner or later they get the, what they deserve. <laughs> hey, look at that! Hi. Hey. It's a young Who's face. That? Who's that? Then what's your name? My name is Sarah. 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 Hi, Hello, Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Sarah. <laughs> Sarah, we're all over the world. I'm in Portugal. I'm in, Malaysia. I'm in Spain. <laughs> I was I was telling my, my grandkids now that I was talking to you all and I was telling them uh, where you were located. And they said, I cannot believe it. Show it to me. They said, no, but the, the oldest, you know. Take a screenshot. But, but he, he knows Vance because Vance was... Um, Vance met them when he was here in uh, in Valencia and Denia. Mm -hmm. So I was, said, Do you remember one? Vance, Bobby, uh, Sebas, Sebastian, mm -hmm. my uh, my grandson? Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, Yeah, I remember him. So he was uh, he's also getting his uh, classes online. Mm -hmm. With a, he to, he told me of an application, a, a platform that I didn't know. I have to <laughs> look oh. for it. That he his, yeah, his um, his teacher um, um, meets with them twice a week. Apart from sending materials and things to do online, and uh, so they are they keep studying. What is the name of the application of the platform? I, I don't I don't remember. I okay. wrote it down somewhere. I'll 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 check it out and I will tell you next time. Okay. I started teaching kids this week, so it's been experience also. Uh, so far, um, <laughs> it, it has worked. Only the problem <laughs> is that I have a. a um, a free account and at 40 minutes, it, you know, it goes, uh, it closes, so, but they are, they like it. It they, doesn't happen to me. I, I teach an hour and then, you know, I, I, I teach the yeah. whole hour. 
and it's free. Yeah. The application we tried. Maybe. When you have two or three more, I mean, if you have only one student, works perfectly. Two. But if you had a three uh, or two, and mm -mm. Uh, well, that's what mean, happened to me. Do you mean Zoom goes on for an hour for free? For me, uh, yes. Yeah. If you have one student. Or yes, two. Just two. I people, have two and it works. Free, as long as okay. you want. Okay. No, it's I because think they're I, because just not I, consistent in policing it. But uh -huh. sometimes they do. I had I had an experience the other day where they they there was a little clock at the top and I mm -hmm. could see running down and and then it just closed. So then I had to open a new meeting. Mm. It doesn't do that all the time. Sometimes they, they tell you how wonderful they are. They're going to extend it, and sometimes they just extend it. Do you know of a platform called Webex? Yeah, I use mm. it. Okay. But it's paid. Mm -hmm. Now, if, uh, for 100 people, it, it's still free. But if you have more than that, then you have to pay. Yet it's a very reliable platform, really. Yeah, oh. it's good. D Daphne, is it uh, Jitsi? What? Jitsi. Did they, did they mention the name Jitsi? I put it no. on the chat. Ah, that's another one. I have yeah, that's, that's, an, that's another one that, that I know. I, yeah. I learned about some uh, platforms this week, but I don't have them at hand now. I'll, I'll have them handy next week to share with you. Yeah. Yeah, I tried web run. last week we were in a, in a, a session from uh, a university in Emirates and it worked fine. I didn't know about WebEx. I just downloaded and uh, it went, uh, it was very clear. People from all over the world were um, uh, yani, uh, joining, yeah. Yeah. Video and audio all went very uh, smoothly. Very well, very smoothly and very reliable it is, yes. But it is a corporate tool. It's very expensive, isn't it? Well, it's expensive, but now it's free. Free for uh -huh. 100 uh, users. No, it's same. free. I just downloaded uh, and uh, I followed the link. Mm -hmm. You're talking about Jitsi or Webex? Webex. Webex. Oh, okay. just, Jitsi is open. It's open source and it's free. Okay. We is are that, using it at school. It works well. Is that Webex.com? <laughs> It's Webex. I, I need to find out. Mm -hmm. Cisco. Web, it's how Cisco. Many, Cisco. How many Webex. participants can you get into Jitsi? I heard it was only a limited to six to eight something. B. And didn't you say you didn't you say you you use Jitsi? We are using Jitsi at school, um, and it houses I don't know a thousand uh, students from our school. So yeah, we but are how many to, get into Jitsi? Okay. Uh, I don't know. We are, our classes are about 20 to 25 students. So I don't have, uh, this is four classes for high school. So. And that works well? For it 20, works 25? well. Wow. 2025. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I think um, one of the problems with Jitsi is you haven't got breakout rooms. You can't yeah, you don't have the same the same functionalities as in Zoom. Like that. Yeah. So it's, it's very limited. It is. It is in a certain way, but I mean, it's it's okay if we use it as we're using it here now, right? With oh, the I've camera. Heard and, are, I've heard we need to be very careful with the Zoom because now there are these uh, Zoom bombers, you know about. <laughs> you know about that. Yeah, uh, I haven't had any would. problems so far, but I've heard that many people have. Mm. Mm. Like in I, Second Life. <laughs> I was concerned oh, yeah. tonight when someone in the waiting room was identified as iPhone. So I asked yeah. this. I think it was Daph. Was it Daph? <laughs> yeah. Guilty. Uh, it was me. Who was me? Uh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Oh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Oh, okay. Hello. I keep going out. Yeah, no, because I was on my computer and I was booted out. Uh -huh. So I put it on the phone and I was uh -huh. very surprised. The phone said simply to add the password. And it said iPhone. And I thought, oh, that's strange. But anyway, I put the password. And then after a while, it said to me, would you like to change your name? Ah, uh, good. <laughs> and so I went out. Started. Yes. Excellent. Okay, so sorry. 
Yeah, I guess that's, <laughs> that's one thing to do about Zoom bombers is you set up a waiting room, and then if if one gets in inadvertently, you can put them back in the waiting room. So uh, don't don't eject them. Uh, apparently, if you try to eject them, they come back, and they they have ways of doing that. But if you have a waiting room, you can pass them back into the waiting room, and you can communicate with the <laughs> waiting room, which is what I did with Elizabeth. I said, "Who is this?" You know. And uh, maybe you have to configure that, Vance. Do you have to configure that to be able to have the waiting room? You do. You have to say uh, when you set up the meeting that you enable a waiting room. Yes. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Thank you. One of many options. There's so many options that you have to put in before uh, you when you set up the meeting. So it's good to know about that. Yeah, but you and you you set it up on your profile, so you only set it up once, and then after that, every meeting automatically no. has the waiting. You oh, can, yeah, yeah. but yes, you can check can. it then afterwards. Yeah, so if you open an account in in Zoom, you can set your profile. And yeah, then that goes over all and, and it works really well. You get a when I noticed it was, it was some people came today. I think Nahir was one of them that I didn't notice the waiting room. I hope you didn't have to wait very long. But yes. uh, when the conversation gets really interesting and just yes, I can't know. get away from it, and then you look up there, oh, there's a waiting room, people in the waiting room. Uh, but um, yeah, so anyway, normally it works really well. You get notified when people are waiting in the waiting room, and then uh, you can let them in. It's quite easy. It's just uh, passing, mousing over their name and admit, and they come in. So, and then if you, if you uh, go to participants and you want to send someone back to the waiting room, you mouse over their name. And you can send those people back to the waiting room. So, but I've never oh. had to do that. We've never really had a Zoom bomber. So maybe we can have a dry run. It was good to know. Did you did you hear about the um, the big rumor that went on around House Party too? Does anyone use House Party? No. Nope. Nope. House Party is is works very much like Zoom, and it's. Uh, it has other options. I haven't used it a lot. I've just been there. Can you write it on in the chat, please? Yeah, Can as you... in house and party. And then there was a big, um, I just, I'm on my phone. I'm not very good on my phone. Um, there was a big uh, rumor saying, oh, house party is really dangerous. And I don't know what. And it was, it house was just party. absolutely an internet rumor. Mm. And, you know, it has... Uh, had no more, and then it, then the same thing happened to Zoom as well, where everyone was saying, "Oh yeah, Zoom is really dangerous." Uh, you know, I don't know. It's so sort of strange these oh, because there's so many Skype, but Skype is getting much better now. Uh, it's all I read very well. I read an article about kids uh, trying to take uh, Google Classroom out of the, the list of applications and they were writing bad comments on purpose, okay? So they know that they can do things. So what is happening with these new tools probably is, is, is competition, you know, one, one to destroy yeah. the others. So <laughs> we are in the middle of this, <laughs> you know. Uh, Dan has asked if anyone uses Microsoft Teams. And uh, oh, yeah. I'm in with a lot of people who do use it, um, but I don't. I, I don't really know it myself. Uh, what do you know about it, Dan? I, I am using it. We are who? using it. At uh, Hala. Mm -hmm. University of Bahrain. Yeah. Uh -huh. We 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 only use Teams. We're not allowed to use any other application or video conferencing. Mm -hmm. We used to use Moodle. Um, back then, I. I Eight models, so I used to use a Schoology, so I was uh -huh. a very big in there. But after I got used to Teams, now it's it's the only um, uh, application that I use. You know, I don't even contact my students anymore. Any, even they don't use emails. So it's very convenient. It's super super convenient, both on your phone and um, on on the laptop or the PC. It's for everything. <laughs> I've not used it before. I, I, I've read about it. Uh, uh, it's good to hear you uh, talk about it. Um, Hello? Yeah, and the, the best part with Teams is the, the, the package. Yeah, and it coming with uh, OneDrive, with other apps, OneDrive, OneShare. 
so many apps that you can use at the same time connected together with the official uh, email of the university, Outlook 365. So uh, you ended up um, not needing any other uh, applications or, or websites or but this is, uh, is there a free version or do you have to be in the enterprise system? Um, we're using the enterprise. But, yeah. um, and, and that's a big disadvantage because as long as you're in Bahrain, you're fine. But when you leave that place, then everything, every Word document you save, every, it's all gone. You know, it's just, uh, exactly. uh, yeah. so that's a, that's a big problem. Uh, at least it would be for me. Uh, I have always tried to circumvent yeah. these things by creating my own spaces and, you know, I mean, yeah. PB works and I'm working there and, and other spaces. Yeah. And then I, but if I have to use uh, blackboard, let's say uh, I, I will create, I'll, I'll have a space there. I'll have a course there, but it's always linking out to my, uh, my private spaces so that I don't, I can yeah. keep things. I can set up things. I can uh, things that I can transfer to another class or to another, uh, uh, institution if I have to so everything yeah. Yeah. stuff I do is all there you're, you're the boss because this is why I created PP words uh, uh, for transferring the links of the students uh, uh, simulated teaching uh, lessons uh, which they uploaded to YouTube and I asked them to unlock this unlisted especially for boys so I thought, let me just take everything into a safe place. And some of the videos of, of the female teachers, I said, I told them, no, do not, uh, sh yani, not only share them on uh, OneDrive, but you need to uh, send them uh, to me in um, uh, my Gmail, my private Gmail. So you're the boss. You taught us here, yeah, Vance. You taught us. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it's just what I've experienced. I, I had a lot of things in, uh, because a lot of my students wouldn't come into Google Docs. They, they're always trying to get out of doing things, you know, by creating problems. Oh, you can't do that. So we had Office 365. Uh, so uh, I had them, um, so they, they were forced to do that because they had the account. So they had to do they had to follow along in the class but i had some in google groups and some in uh, sorry not google groups but uh what google docs you know doing writing there and others were writing in office 365 and that stuff you know when when i left that uh, place i just uh, it disappeared but i still have my google docs from students from 20 years well 20 let's see about the turn of the century well, no maybe uh, okay <laughs> tw 2009 or you know, whenever I started using Google Docs, I know this, this, the writing is still there. If I wanted to do some research, you know, on yeah. errors of this cohort of students, I, it's, yeah. it's there, you know, so yeah. um, it's a really nice thing to have. And, yeah. But thank you for reminding me. I'll keep on doing <laughs> that. Uh, excuse me, I, I need to go because, you know, it's Ramadan here. This is our third day. Oh. Ramadan Kareem. Oh, um, and now we need to go for preparing some things. Uh, we have only one hour and a half. Mm, okay. So thank you very much. Uh, I really enjoy just coming and dropping and just uh, joining in different. And I like how you jump from one topic to another. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, <laughs> participant driven tonight. Bye, Halina. With hip style. Bye. Bye -bye. Okay, well, Hi, I think Hala. I need Bye -bye. to go too. Hi, my dear. Yeah, I need to go too. Teresin, how with the recipe soon, huh? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Right. Take care. Bye bye. Bye, bye. See you. Yep. I cannot read it. Yeah. Okay. So, does anybody have any last minute things? Because uh, Bobby's actually in a Zoom session with somebody else. I'm supposed to go and join them. Yes. This, this is more important, so don't worry about it. So, bye, guys. Okay, oh, Rita, before you go, you're you're with us tomorrow. I'm coming coming back at yeah. this time. This time tomorrow. Uh, uh, this time tomorrow, exactly. And you're okay. Uh, your internet at is 10. working now, and it's going to be in this yeah, room. internet is working. Hopefully, it will go on working tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about okay. that. Uh, happens, See you next week. Have fun. Bye, bye. Bye, people. Bye. 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 B
Bye. 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 Hugs. Bye. Besitos, Bye. besitos. Yes. Chao, chao. Bye. 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 Okay. So I'll stop the recording. But before I stop, let me just say hi, Elizabeth, bye, Nahir. Uh, this has been uh, Learning Together, episode 434, sorry, it's 454, and uh, a Talon session, as long as we're in teaching, learning, and isolation. And today is the 26th of April, 2020. And this has been Webheads in Action, the fifth meeting of Webheads in Action. Uh, and let me just... Uh, be my uh, video working properly. Okay, so anyway, the fifth web is in action, uh, weekly revival meeting, we call them. This is all, the people you just saw were all web is in action. So um, these, these are people who have been with each other since 2002, I think we started. And some of them for that long, and some of them for 10 years or five years, or 15 years, etc. Okay, so anyway, nice to see everybody. And we're, we're back here again next week, uh, one week from today on Sunday at um, uh, 8 o'clock UTC. Oh, no, sorry, noon UTC. That's 8 o'clock in the evening where I am. Noon UTC. Okay, if you're with us, we'll see you then. And I just got to remember how to turn off the recording. I guess under more. Yep, stop recording. Okay, bye-bye.